Okay, um, we're going to go through some duty of care now. Um, what I want to concentrate on first is the flu probe because 9 out of 10 times, if, they, if your readings are questionable, um, it's normally something to do with a flu probe, either a wet filter uh, or uh, a blockage, or indeed it might be as simple as the, the case pipe slightly open and it's, and it's letting in oxygen which is depleting your reading. So if we concentrate on the flu probe first, Firstly, if you, get your, if you get your probe and you put your finger over, the, over this end, block it up, and then blow down the metal work, encapsulating the end, obviously, what should happen is if you can't blow down it, that shows the integrity of the line is okay, and you've got no leaks uh, anywhere along, along the way. Um, if you repeat that test, but this time leave the open end and put it to your ear, blow down it, what that's, that's showing you, you've got a clear line, you've got no blockages, um, and you can't hear any gurgling, so it means there's no moisture uh, in the line. Um, and then, if it passes both those tests, then it's a good idea, you know, a good idea that the, the flu probe is working okay. Um, if you did have water in, this is a split chamber uh, uh, filter filter bowl. So what you've got in on the bottom is, the, is, for, is for capturing the moisture, and on the top is for capturing the particulates. Um, and what you've got is inside there, you've got them two compartments separated by uh, a middle disc. Okay, now that middle disc can be removed. If you use a clamp probe, it's quite handy because it helps you to remove it if you've got no nails like me, and also it captures the O-ring so you can't lose the O-ring. Now, obviously what you do is when you open that up, if there was moisture in there, any moisture, any condensate at all, it needs to come out, it needs to, you know, just dry it out. So you get a dry cloth, obviously go inside there, and it allows you, once you remove the middle disc, it allows you plenty of room to take all the moisture out. And then, if you look closely at that, you'll see that it's got a, a, a spigot pointing up, and inside there in the middle, you can also see there's one looking very similar to that, and that's how I remember which way round they go. So you pop that middle disc back on, the O-ring goes on the top of that, and then your filter, if you look into this compartment here, your filter locates on the, on the spigots internally there, so you push that onto there, Make sure it's home and centralised. Make sure your two locating lugs are, uh, are there, and not broken or snapped or compromised in any way. Um, and then you pop that back onto the locating lugs and twist it right up till it's tight. And then obviously what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to repeat the test I did earlier. So I'm going to hold the finger on that. Nothing that's letting by, so we know the readings aren't going to be depleted. And I've got a nice clear run. So now the flu probe uh, is ready to go. If you do need uh, new filters, obviously they're available through uh, most of your uh, local tray counters. Um, and uh, obviously if you're missing an O-ring or indeed, uh, unfortunately you've dropped this, because what happens is sometimes when you take this out of the bag, people let it drop to the floor and you can send a crack in it and that, that, would, that would cause you uh, an issue. So all of these parts will be available from your local plumbers merchants. Um, we have a duty of care document that is also on our website which does show you um, exactly how the uh, filter bar goes together if that's going to be helpful to you. Uh, or indeed you can obviously ring the technical line and we'll happily support you on the phone uh, if need be. Okay, uh, we've, we've done the flu probe, now we're going to concentrate on the analyzer itself, doing a couple of checks on the analyzer. So if uh, normally you turn the analyzer on, obviously with your flu probe connected and your flu probe would be, um, you'd be outside uh, standing with your instrument in your flu probe or you'd at least be hanging your flu probe out the window um, but I'm just going to do instrument only at the moment just to show you some checks. So we turn the instrument on this is a, a Sprint Evo so when you see it, it first comes up you'll see on the screen starting up and then that gets us through to the test menu. Now if I pick flu gas analysis and I press the top middle button to go into that, um, it's saying auto zero. So now it's asking me to confirm I'm in clean air. As I said, that would normally be outside or out, or you'd be hanging uh, the flu probe outside the window. So I'm going to press to confirm that I'm in clean air. If you've got a V range, it's slightly different. You have to wait for the flat line before you press the middle button. But this, the Evo is automatic. You just press the button and it will find its own zero point. So now you'll see it stabilizing and your purge symbol is on the screen 
and then in a few seconds the stabilising will turn to zeroing like so and now it lets me into flue gas, uh, flue gas 1 if there's a number up there it means that you've got more than one page so we've got CO, CO2 ratio if I press this bottom middle button twice it's going to get me to flue gas 3 and the reason I'm taking this there is because it gives us all the readings in one place so you've got an oxygen reading, you've got a CO reading, although albeit zero, and the rest of them are hashed because obviously there's no reading in here at the moment for it to calculate. So what I want you to do is, um, if you concentrate on the oxygen uh, on the top line there, if I blow into the middle spigot now, and when I turn it around, I'd like you to look at the O2 reading on the top line there. And you'll see your O2 reading drops that time to about 18% but you'll see that it recovers quite quickly. Now that's, that tells me that the, the sample's been taken from the pump through over the manifold to the sensors and, and they're, they're reacting in, in, you know, in, the, in a timely fashion. And they're recovering as well, which tells you there's no blockages, the pump's strong, um, and it, you've got no, uh, no moisture in the internal tubes. Now if I do this again, this time I would like you to concentrate on the, the um, third and the fourth line down, the CO2 and the ratio. Um, so if I blow that on that again, And we quickly look at those lines, you'll see the CO2 just, cut, just cuts in just enough uh, that it, it can close and shows you a CO2 reading your ratio periodically cuts in as well. That just tells you that your oxygen is, is calculating your, uh, your CO2 and uh, again it's all returned back to 20.9 in a timely fashion which means it's, it's very responsive and, and it doesn't look like we've got too many problems with this analyzer. Now the other thing you can do is if you block up the middle spigot underneath, completely block it, what happens is it comes up with plump box. Now that's obviously put in place to protect um, from the flu probe sucking up moisture into your analyzer. Or if you've got a block filter, it also identifies that for you. Um, and it's to protect the analyzer. But what this is, what we're actually using it for uh, on this particular test is to make sure there's no internal tube leaks or that the pump's got any blockages or debris in it. Um, and because we've come up plump blocked, if I press escape now and the pump comes straight back on, then we know, which it does, now we know that, um, that there's no problem with the pump and there's no problem with the internal tubes. So um, combined with the flu probe checks, um, that shows us that the overall integrity um, of both the uh, flu probe and the instrument itself uh, all looks fine and good to go. Now we can't, unfortunately, there's no easy way of doing this, testing the CO like this. Um, the only way you're going to be able to check the CO is actually on an appliance. But this is a good uh, uh, indication that everything is working okay and that your pump's all right and that you, you don't have any internal tube uh, issues. Thank you.